Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Dinoverse by Capital Gains Studios. The game plays two to five players, takes roughly about a half an hour to play, and is for ages eight and up. And in the game Dinoverse, you are going to be dinosaurs. You're going to have your own unique herd, as well as other players' herds, and then you're going to have the main herd. The objective of the game is to utilize the dinosaurs in your herd to score you points at the end of the game based on their requirements. Most of the requirements are going to either involve the discard pile or the kill pile, the main in-play herd, or even the cards on the bottom of the deck. You're going to be drawing cards at the beginning of the round and placing them out in the discard and the herd, and then on your turn you'll choose an action that will let you switch cards, that will let you flip cards, and uh, change the orientation of certain cards to do certain things. Each dinosaur has its own unique ability and scoring of points abilities at the end of the game, and your objective is to have the best scoring dinosaurs possible based on the herd and a death placements of the specific deck cards from the herd. Will you score the most points at the end of the game when either the event or extinction card is revealed, find out in the game Dinoverse. I'll explain the setup, how to play, and of course my review. To begin play for Dinoverse, it's pretty simple. Go ahead and take out the herbivores and carnivores from the deck, and then give each player one herbivore card at random and one carnivore card at random. They will look at those cards, choose one face up and one face down in front of them next to their player aid. Then you'll give each player a dinosaur egg that they'll utilize in the game for an extra turn or of course a point at the end of the game. Setup is pretty simple. You'll shuffle those two types of cards, the herbivores and the carnivores together, and then you're going to take two cards and place them with the three events in that come with the deck. Shuffle those together to form five cards, three events and two random cards, and put them on the bottom of the deck, and then finally take the extinction card and place it on the bottom. After that, you'll flip over five cards from the deck, starting with a face down card, a face up, a face down, a face up, and a face down. After that, give somebody, the first player, maybe the last person to visit a natural history museum or a dinosaur museum, and begin play for the game. Playing the game Dinoverse is also very simple. If you have the first player card, what you're going to do is you're going to draw two cards at the beginning of the game from the top of the herd deck. Then you will choose one of them and put it in the discard pile. The other one, you will put it in the herd at the very end, and the orientation will be based on whatever the opposite of the closest orientation card is. So if the last card is face down, the one you place will be face up. And of course, if the last card was face up, that card you place will be face down. After the first player card has been done, or the beginning of round ability has been done by the first player, then that player will choose one action, which is located on their player aid. They will choose an action, the next player will choose an action, and the game will progress up until the point where one of the events is flipped face up, or if none of those are flipped face up, the extinction card comes out and the game is over. You'll tally up points, and whoever has the most is the winner how the actions work. There are a number of actions. One of them is to exchange. You can exchange a dinosaur in the herd uh, in, in two different places. So if you have one here and one here, you can switch them as long as they are of the same type. Uh, you can also go ahead and switch dinosaurs from your side of the field uh, to the pack and vice versa, as long as you choose one specific set. Another thing that you can do is peek. You can secretly look at two herd cards uh, that are face down. You'll look at them and place them back down to see what they are. The next thing you can do is redraw. You'll pick up the cards that you have, you will draw a new card from the deck, and then you will choose one card to discard, place one card face down in front of you, and the other face up. The next action you can do is you can flip. You'll choose one dinosaur in the herd, and you will flip it up and see what it does. Each dinosaur has specific actions, such as arrival, awakening, defend, and eating, and uh, based on what they do will determine what you can do with the dinosaur. Arrival, when it gets flipped up, it'll just do what it says. If it's an eat ability that gets triggered, you can eat a dinosaur that it allows you to eat, putting it into the discard pile. If the defending dinosaur has a defend and they are face up, then the defense action will take place. And if the uh, dinosaur has a specific like uh, ambush effect, then that ambush will trigger if they're face down. And each dinosaur has its own unique arrival, defense, ambush, eat type abilities. If you don't want to flip, the last thing you can do is populate, which is pretty simple. You'll take a card from the top of the deck and you will place it on the very edge of or the end of the deck here, or the end of the pack here, based on whatever the previous orientation was, you'll flip it. So if it's face down, you'll put a face up uh, dinosaur and vice versa. 
And those are the actions of the game. And like I said, you choose one of those and then you go ahead and pass. And the next player will choose one of those and pass. And once it goes all the way around, this is going to move one player to uh, the clockwise direction. They will do the first player uh, actions, which is draw two, put one in the discard, put one out, and then it'll go around again and rinse and repeat. If you want, there's also these egg tokens here. They're worth one point at the end of the game, but you can utilize them for an extra action on your turn, and some dinosaurs will let you regain them, and you can do that as long as you have them. And uh, the last thing in the game is that the events uh, trigger certain effects and abilities. Some of them will generate more points for certain players, and other ones are going to generate you less points or no points. And then, of course, the final thing is extinction, where when it's revealed, the game will just end, and there's no other effects involved. And you can kind of choose all cards to place face up or face down. Regardless, though, that's how you play the game Dinoverse. This is one of the more simple games that Capital Gains Studios has released that I have seen up until seeing their Asian series, which has got a bunch of similar card games in style, uh, but this one here is probably among my favorites. Uh, basically, this game requires a lot of skill and memory, um, and there's a bit of luck involved as well, and you're just trying to create the best possible outcome for what dinosaurs that you have. And if you don't like the outcome that is slowly becoming what the either the herd or the discard pile at the bottom of the deck is, you can switch your dinosaurs out for new ones on the field that will benefit you. Each of the dinosaurs provides a unique ability and a unique twist that gives you the opportunity to score more points or uh, gain more traction, remove points from another player, and so on and so forth, because you'll know what 50% of your opponent's scoring capability is going to be. Sometimes players will even double up, and if you know that they have one Stegosaurus, it might be possible that they have two, so removing dinosaurs from a herd will generate you value. Certain cards, like Allosaurus, are going to give you points per herbivore in the discard pile, whereas a Parasaur... Para, Parasaurolophus <laughs> gives you 13 points, but you lose 4 points for each Parasaurolophus. I mean, you get the idea in the discard pile. Uh, the Stegosaurus will give you 2 points for each dinosaur in the herd, and uh, the Velociraptor is going to give you 3 points for each of the following sets. One carnivore in the herd and one herbivore in the discard pile. So if you have 4 carnivores in the herd and 4 in the discard pile, that will score you 3 points for each set. And that's the idea of the game, trying to generate the best possible two cards in your herd to make and account for the dinosaurs that are available in the main herd, the discard pile, and even sometimes underneath the extinction card, because there are certain dinosaurs that will let you do that. It's a really fun game to play. This one here has a lot of options. They're all very simple and straightforward, and your turns are quick, even when taking the extra turn action. You feel like you have an idea or grasp of the game, and where you might not remember everything, like me, you're still going to have a pretty good idea of what certain cards are face down, and even if you don't, you can peek. This game is a ton of fun. It's going to be a great game for kids as well, because even at the worst case scenario, you're still going to score a decent amount of points, and likely the scoring is still going to be relatively close at the end of the game. It's going to come down to a lot of memory and a lot of skill that will generate you those in initial additional points that you're going to need in order to just be better than your opponents and score the victory. And each time you play, you're going to get a little better. Your memory comprehension is going to increase, the, the kind of spatial reasoning is going to increase, and of course the size of the herd or discard pile or whatever it is you're trying to do will also increase based on the abilities that you so choose. It's always going to be an easy play, but the complexity requires what you need to do, where the cards are, and what the best possible strategy is based on locations. If all the cards were face up, this game would not be good, but utilizing the cards face down uh, en enhances the gameplay, it changes the style of play and what you want to do and when you can do it and based on what things are up or down, and it makes this game a ton of fun. We played through this game about three times, and we really, really enjoyed it. Um, the basic rules in the game itself are challenging to understand, like this would be more of a quick setup guide, whereas you're going to want to read the full rulebook to understand exactly how to play. Um, but other than that, I don't really have any issues with this game. I mean, if you're not a person who's great at memory games, you're probably not going to like this one, but you can still play it and you'll still do well, and you'll inherently understand the game 
and get better as you move along, unlike some memory games, but it's still gonna require that memory. And if you're like, I just can't remember this or that, it might be frustrating for you. This plays up to five players and it plays well, two, three, four, and five players. It really doesn't matter what size of play you have. I always, of course, recommend the most players possible for most games because more people is always more fun, but this is the type of game that you can sit out there and play two players with. I would strongly suggest this is a family style friendly game that you have your kids involved, cousins, nephews, aunts, uncles, and grandmas and grandpas. It pretty much plays the entire kit and caboodle. The artwork is solid, beautiful dinosaur art, straightforward decks, straightforward abilities, what they do, um, and I'm excited to see what they add to the game. This is a prototype. It's going to include the number of dinosaurs of each type in the deck, which is going to be nice, and maybe some of the little, little bits and pieces. I know that they sometimes do additional expansion packs for their games, but overall, you can have a fun time with the game Dinovorce, and I look forward to seeing this game funded, which I'm sure it will be, because Capital Gains Studios gets funded, because their games are great. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Dinoverse. If you're interested in picking up the game, there's a link down below in the description where you can, of course, pick this game up. You can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more available to you if you would like. And you can also check out our live streams every Sunday, 6.30 p.m. PST, where we play games just like this one. And in fact, this one might be a really great live stream game that we can show off um, in the next coming Sunday or Sundays because the campaign will be live. And this is one of those quick, easy games that people can kind of see and get and understand what it's going to be kind of like um, to decide whether it's a game for you or not for you. Uh, that's pretty much all I got this time, guys. And as always, I look forward to venturing into the Dinoverse with you next time.